good morning. And what a great way to start the morning. And I'm already out of breath, so we'll see how far I can get through this. I would just like to welcome the WFN Network member funds to this annual conference. It has been spectacular so far. I would like to thank each of the member funds, individual donors, institutional funders, sponsors, and the Detroit Host Committee, all who have made this conference a huge success, as well as all of you who have contributed to the strength and continued growth of this movement. I am Alandra Washington, Director of Family Economic Security Programs at the W.K. Kellogg Foundation, and I am truly excited to serve as WFN's incoming board chair. Thank you. And what an extraordinary time to be involved with the Women's Funding Network and a part of this powerful movement. I get the amazing opportunity to serve with a brilliant group of women and colleague board members, as well as an innovative and hardworking staff. I could not ask for a better confluence of passion, intelligence, dedication, and commitment to the cause. At the W.K. Kellogg Foundation, we support efforts to help improve the conditions of vulnerable children, families, and communities. Our vision is to build a world where every child thrives. It is no surprise that the foundation has been a longtime supporter, believer, and champion of the Women's Funding Network and this movement. Since WFN's inception, we have invested over $30 million in efforts of the network, as well as millions of dollars in investments to individual women's funds sitting right here in this room today. We understand the importance of a strong, effective, and visionary network that can fuel a movement to address some of the world's most wicked problems facing women children, and families. We recognize the critical voice and incredible action of this network, you, the members, provide, that you provide in making this world a better place. Be it eliminating global sex trafficking for young women and girls, providing opportunities to help low-income women lift themselves out of poverty, ensuring quality early childhood education for young children so that single mothers can get the education and quality jobs that they deserve, or advocating for reproductive rights of women. It is this movement that possesses the power, the passion, and purpose to transform not only the lives of women and girls, but families and communities. It is the three Ps, power, passion, and purpose that has led to tremendous impact of this network and has it kept me involved as a funder, advocate, and champion for all of these efforts. Since this awesome honor of gaining the support and encouragement from my board colleagues, members of the network, trusted confidants, and my loving husband who thinks I'm a crazy woman all the time <laughs> trying to run around here and do all of this stuff, to actually step up in a new way to provide leadership to the future of the network and the movement. I have been reflective about my leadership and leadership frameworks in general, asking myself, what can I bring to the table that can help move our work and the efforts forward in a strong and catalytic way? The first thing that came to mind was the first time that I organized a collective giving experience. I watched my parents, Alonzo and Armentha Bird, give their time, talent, and treasure to help provide community, social, and most oftentimes survival capital for many families in the Beacon Heights neighborhood of East St. Louis, Illinois. Similar to Lisa Hall's personal family story, my father was a sharecropper from Greenville, Mississippi. And if he was living today, he would be 93 years old. He married a beautiful bride from Lone Oak County, Arkansas, who grew up on a family-owned farm. They met in St. Louis while my mother was visiting one of her favorite aunts. 
and eight months later, they married and settled in East St. Louis and raised six children, five daughters, and one son. My parents believed in the principles of mutual aid and benefit, and they instilled these principles in all of us. I remember being in the sixth grade when I organized my first philanthropic experience. It was a group of my BFFs, and we were all a part of a secret clubhouse that I begged my father to, uh, to help me uh, clean out from one of the old sheds that we had in the back of our yard. I encouraged the young ladies in my clubhouse to use our dues to buy school supplies for a classmate who did not have them instead of using the dues for uh, snacks. And our daily, our weekly snacks were Doritos, Funyuns, and hot corn chips. <laughs> As I reflected on this small but powerful experience that made a difference in me, it started me to think about the type of leadership that I would need to bring to help grow the network and the movement in meaningful and intentional ways as we all work toward impact in solving the wicked problems that we face. In 1973, Berkeley urban planning professors Riddle and Weber described wicked problems as large, messy, complex, and systemic. They have no single root cause. They involve many stakeholders who have many ideas about the problem, the causes, and the solutions. It is impossible to write a well-defined problem statement for wicked messes, and the set of solutions for wicked problems take a long time to see impact, and it is extremely hard to measure. Sounds like our work. These wicked problems embody the realities that this movement faces every day across the globe. So the question is, what kind of leadership is needed to deal with these wicked messes in our communities, our towns, our rural areas, and villages? I propose that it needs to be steeped in a values-based framework that will help us push forward transformational and sustainable change. One such framework is deliberate leadership. This leadership framework was developed around values that a leader can bring to their work as they engage in communities. The framework is characterized by seven C's, and I would just like to offer them up to you as a way to think about the leadership of this network moving forward. The first is courage the courage to accept risk and ambiguity and realize that simple solutions will not take us where we want to go and will not get us to the change that we want to see. We have to be willing to look at change from multiple dimensions and multiple approaches. Next is collaboration. We must be willing to engage diverse voices in our work, creating a space to share power at the table and recognize that this movement and network can not only be concerned about gender equity, but we must also be concerned about racial equity and addressing the disparities that exist for all women and girls, and especially those women and girls of color. Thank you. The next is community. This characteristic means that we must be willing to build solutions together in the communities in which we work and understand that the solutions might already exist in those communities. It is our job to seek out that innovation in places where conventional wisdoms, wisdom tells us that there might be a deficit. There is definitely wisdom in those places and solutions that we can find to those problems. For transformation to happen in the network, candor is critical to our leadership work. Speaking the truth about what is working and what is not working, soliciting feedback and a critical analysis from our partners and stakeholders that help to bring us to a level of accountability in many ways that many leaders nowadays shy away from. We must be willing to hold one another accountable in this network. Creativity. 
being willing to imagine new scenarios of our work, a new way of showing up, being, and thinking for the present as well as the future, and learning from one another all along the way. And compassion. We heard Rebecca speak about empathy on yesterday as a needed characteristic for transformational leadership. Not just understanding the situation or walking in one's shoes, but walking in one's pain. Our work should be driven by empathy, not ego. And lastly, capital. Capital to invest in long-term solutions. But we already know that because that's the work that we're doing every day. I want to lift up that we must be willing to be inclusive of where we seek capital, innovative on how we use capital, and strategic in, in ways that we leverage capital for long-term impact and sustainability. So there you have it. The leadership framework I commit to implementing as I embark on the next leg of this journey with all of you. The poet Maya Angelou sums it up best in her inaugural poem on the pulse of the morning spoken at the presidential inauguration ceremony, January 20th, 1993, when she says, lift up your eyes upon this day breaking for you. Give birth again to the dream. Women, children, men, Take it into the palms of your hands. Mold it into the shape of your most private need. Sculpt it into the image of your most public self. Lift up your hearts. Each new hour holds new chances for a new beginning. Do not be wedded forever to fear, yoked eternally to brutishness. The horizon leans forward offering you space to place new steps of change. Here, on the pulse of this fine day, you may have the courage to look up on and out and up on me, the rock, the river, the tree, your country, no less to Midas than the medicant, no less to you now than the mastodon then. Here, on the pulse of this new day, you may have the grace to look up and out and into your sister's eyes and into your brother's face, your country, and simply say, very simply, with hope, good morning. WFN Network, good morning. Thank you. I would now like to introduce our dynamic, energy-filled, innovative, creative, out-of-the-box thinker, the CEO and president of the Women's Funding Network. Please welcome her, Michelle Ozumba. <laughs> 